Okay, so the, the undercoat's on, just a couple of different colours used, a grey and a brown. But it's a bit patchy here and there, so... And it's not quite rusty enough for the, the techniques I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to use a, a cheaper paint type rather than using more expensive citadel paints on a terrain object like this. And then really it's just going to be a case of getting rid of all the white bits and giving it a kind of messy, rusty look with a few different tones of brown. Really doesn't matter about the coverage too much or how patchy it is, if anything that helps. It's just going to be a little bit tricky getting into some of these areas that are tucked away. But this, uh, this rust layer might be seen when the, uh, the paint job's finished, so it's worth just getting everything covered. And uh, this is why you're using cheaper paints and a cheap brush. As I go, I'll just change this brown colour a bit. Add a bit more orange to get different uh, looks to it. It's acrylic paint, again, that I'm using. But this stuff can actually be a bit thick. So for a model like this, that's not a big problem because it just helps with the, uh, the feeling of rust and erosion and uh, wear and tear. But you maybe want to watch that it doesn't get too thick because it can look a bit painted on. So I'll carry on with this and then uh, let you see the result. Okay, so that's it just about done for this uh, rust. There, so you can see why it's worth using, you know, cheaper paints because uh, you'd need a whole pot of the Citadel stuff. So it doesn't really matter too much about how it looks. Just try to hide any of the grey bits or the bits that weren't uh, covered with the, the undercoat spray. Try to give it a kind of rough finish if possible. Or not rough, but varied in the uh, way the orange appears but we'll be covering a lot of this up with the, uh, the paint okay, the top finish so something like that will do and I guess to be fair if you wanted to you could like you could leave a model like that if you wanted but we'll uh, We'll look at doing some uh, weathered paintwork, enamel washes, that kind of thing, and uh, see if we can make it look a bit a bit better than that. Okay, that's that layer dry now. Just the the brown and orange acrylic paints. It's going to get a basic rust look. Nothing uh, nothing too special with that. What I might do now is just do uh, a little bit of improving to this with some uh, Citadel Typhus Corrosion. So again, just an old brush for this. And it's just a case of dabbing it in to uh, different areas just to kind of break it up. Try and avoid leaving too many obvious brush marks and maybe just focus on the areas where there are joins or old welds. So I'll carry on with this and then. Uh, See how it looks. Okay, so that's the, the typhus corrosion on and dried. Just gonna kind of scrubbed here and there. Just to give it that bit of texture. 
that. So next now is going to be just putting in a sort of dry brush of uh, riser rust. Actually I've started doing some in the top there which gets that really nice bright orange tone into it. So again another uh, old brush for this. And then really it's just a case of putting some on and then just working it around the area. Kind of random way. Can't really go wrong but as it dries it does tone down a little bit. And just over that typhus corrosion and that sandy texture. A little bit of that texture when you dry brush over it. And you can put it on thickly in some some places. Now I do intend to add a worn paint effect on top of this. So maybe don't want to spend too long or put too much effort into this uh, into this rust layer because as I say we're going to go over it but you might want to just leave it with the rust finish there'd be nothing wrong with that and you could really uh, make it look good with some weathering powders on top of this and just leave it as a fully uh, fully rusted metal piece as I say I think I'll uh, do a do an kind of worn paint job on top of this. So it's quite possible that a lot of these little areas of the rust are going to get covered up in some way. That's alright. It's just part of the, the random nature of the, of the effect. Okay, so that's the riser rust finished. on the model now, which gives you quite a lot of interest in effects and colours and patterns from that rusty look. So that's it for the base layer. Um, as I said, if you wanted to you could stop there, maybe add some weather and powder onto that to give it a kind of drier, dustier look and that would look really good. I think for me, I might give this a, a spray with a with a varnish just to protect what we've got and then do some uh, paint effects. Okay, with the varnish now done, I can get on with starting to paint this up. So as I said, I'm going to do uh, maybe two or three different methods for the chipping effects couple of options here to use, um, Green Stuff World Chipping Medium and then the uh, AK Worn Effects. So maybe the first one I'll do is this uh, Green Stuff World Chipping Medium on the uh, lower half of the model and uh, I'll get the airbrush looked out for that. Probably best to use the airbrush to apply this. You can do it with a brush, traditional brush, but Probably get a better effect with the airbrush application, and then I'll do the same with the uh, the AK worn effects in the top half. Okay, so those uh, chipping mediums are are sprayed on. I've just done a quick masking job just to try and leave some areas just uh, pure rust put all that complicated pipe work and things where I've just gone in with a, a roll of masking tape to try and just block that off a little bit and that'll just give me something to uh, keep the paint away from a couple of the pipes just so we can have different uh, finishes so next is to start spraying up some colour. I've got a couple of tones here, model air paints. Um, I'm 
go for a grey for the bottom half and then a, a nice pale blue for the, the top half. Okay, so that's the two tones of uh, paint applied now. So I'll just... It's, it's not a perfect mask, it doesn't need to be. It's meant to be uh, rough. It's the advantage of, of doing a piece of terrain like this and painting like this. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Okay, so that's the masking tape off and uh, you can see we've managed to keep a bit of the rust in those guts there, that's plenty. That's going to work fine. So next stage is to start trying to remove some of these uh, top coats of paint and seeing how the chipping mediums work. Okay, so I've got a couple of uh, brushes here, a toothbrush and some water. So my idea now is just to wet the paint and hopefully we'll start getting some uh, chipping effects appearing. I'm going to try the toothbrush as well, something a bit stronger. Here's the, the result now of uh, removing or working away at the uh, the paint layer to reveal the, the rust beneath. So you can see the difference in effects between the two products. The bottom side there was the uh, Green Stuff World chipping medium. which I felt was maybe a bit easier just to kind of scrub away the paint almost as much as you wanted to. And then on the top half I was using the AK Interactive Chipping Medium, I think it's called, what is it called? Worn Effects Acrylic Fluid and you can see the difference. It's got this kind of quite natural looking spotty result where the paintworks come away. So that's the, the model as it stands now. Still to do some uh, painting of bits and pieces. Um, still to do something with the top cone chimney piece. Might just use sponging technique on that, we'll see. But that's where we've got to at this point. So in the next video we'll get it finished, complete the base, and then see how it looks.